Boston's community centers are a hybrid of city government, grassroots leadership, and nonprofit partners. That creates a potential for programs that closely fit community needs, but also for challenges in oversight. The challenges were recently explored in a report by the Boston Finance Commission. Joining us from the commission is the executive director, Matt Cahill. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Matt. Thank you very much. First of all, is there something here that's broke enough that you've got to fix it? Well, it, it really points to the city's fault, not necessarily the partners. There should be contracts in place either way, and to have to ask after contracts or should have been issued five years ago means that for five years nobody at the community centers realized there was a lack of that contract. Uh, what does that mean? I mean, in terms of uh, you know either access to uh, contracts for people who, who are looking for opportunities or just even quality control? So it points to exactly that. So uh, originally the contracts were set forth so that we could kind of uh, offset the costs to the citizens of Boston, but still offer the services. Um, as of right now, we don't see any audits of those over five years. We have no idea what was provided other than what the vendors are willing to tell us they provided. And it does appear that they've been providing some services. It's just the city has no idea what those services were and how much the value of those services are. So going forward, we have asked them to do an audit of all that and see what really what the value is and what they should place on those leases and maybe even bring them back in house. Well, in, in the story about this uh, in, in the Globe recently, they mentioned the enclosed tennis courts uh, in Charlestown, and, and somebody involved in that community center says, "Look, this is provide a valuable service to the neighborhood, keeping a lot of kids out of trouble." Uh, uh, what about that? So, and it could be true. I mean, it would be nice if the city knew that. Um, the problem we have is, and, and those people, by the way, those people that work over there at that tennis bubble is what they call it were very forthcoming, very helpful. They, they seem like really nice people. They do offer classes to some of the community centers, some of the schools, um, but they also operate privately, independently, and they take in revenues as well. Uh, one of the things that we had seen in the original contract that was put out, the RFP was put out for the services, was that the utility should have been paid by the vendor, so that would offset the cost. But the utilities were tied into Charlestown High School, so there was no way for the vendor to know how much those utilities should have been. So as of this point, yes, they provide services, but the city should have followed through on their end of things. And, and that must be a common problem, maybe, because, because a lot of these community centers, either they're in schools or municipal buildings, right? True. And there's only four independent buildings that are actually independent of anything, a school or another municipal building. So these are the four that we had looked at. So what kind of steps would you like to see to make this work better? Uh, first and foremost, we, you know, we have to default to the safety factor, which uh, you know, these vendors may have done quarry checks on their employees, and I'm sure they did, but the city has to verify that and assure that that's done so that there's safety factor. Uh, also, there has to be an insurance policy in place so that if anybody gets injured, the city is indemnified against that. Uh, those were also part of the original contract. For some reason, they weren't followed through. Uh, you know, thirdly, things are changing. You know, the Charlestown, for instance, where the tennis bubble is, we've just gotten an agreement with Wynn for some additional revenues to go into that community. So at this point, the city should take a look at what their needs and what their resources will be going forward. Um, each each community center is in a very they're in various communities, so each community has an individual and unique set of issues that they want to take a look at before they make a decision going forward. Well, one of the other things that the FinCom has done over the years is, is keep an eye on city assets and make sure that the taxpayers are, are getting the most for their money. We have one asset that's being redeveloped in the near future, the Winthrop Square garage. You've been looking at that for a while. Um, what do you see now? So an RFP was issued yesterday by the Boston Redevelopment Authority. It still is an asset of the city of Boston um, and potentially a very well-placed asset, probably anywhere between 50 and $100 million on the open market. It is directly behind the old Fine Leans building in the financial district. They're talking about a signature landmark high-rise here. It would be great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knew when we were kids, right? We right. would have bought property down there. It's, um, it's, it's a large parcel, and, and you know, the, I think they put out a request for interest in June of last year, and they had eight people respond to it, and all of them were high-rises of some kind, condo, mixed-use developments. Um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a game-changer in that district. They want to make some community space downstairs to make it a little more lively during the nighttime. I, I think it's a great idea. It's just my, my agency is concerned to make sure that the taxpayers who have been supporting this all these years is going to get a return on investment and a very fair return on investment at this point. It looks like we should, but you've got to make sure the process goes the right way. And, and I guess the things to keep an eye on is, is uh, you know, when the developers pay for this one way or another, uh, where does the money go and, and how do we know? 
And, th and that's it. That's why we always advocate an RFP, um, because you, the city can decide what they want through the zoning and through approvals through the BRA. And then you just put it out for bid and let the highest bidder win and control the process through the BRA process itself. But uh, right now, we don't know. And, but I do know there's eight people that were interested a year ago, and the building boom is still going on in the city. So I think that they should get a great return on the investment. Another thing that's uh, down the road is more disclosure about lobbyists who do business with the city representing the interests of various clients. Uh, and I, I guess we haven't had a whole lot of transparency about that up to this point. Yeah, there's, there's been a few people who have questioned it and there's been a few articles in the paper about it. Um, to be honest, I haven't seen the legislation or the rules yet that they put in, but um, they, it's in front of the city council, it's been submitted. But um, you know, I think it shows a lot of um, character to say that we need to address this and it's been brought forth by the mayor. And, and I guess the other thing here is that there's going to be some kind of possibly uh, 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 disclosures of campaign contributions. So uh, you, at least you know wh which officials are in with which lobbyists and we, we can you know, make our own decisions on that. And I think in the age of you know, the internet, it's hard to hide a lot of this. But I also think it, it's, it does speak a lot to going forward, the administration wanting to have it out there. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us. You're very welcome. Thank you. From the Boston Finance Commission, Matt Cahill. Up ahead, controlling the media and your message. We'll hear about lessons for young people.